Hello everybody and welcome to this lesson from Miss Duckworth's Classroom. Today we're going to be looking at how to analyse a literature extract and this is part one of a two-part series and this is going to be on a streetcar named Desire. So the first thing that we're going to look at is how you address the assessment objectives. Obviously the assessment objectives are very very important because they are the foundation for everything that you are going to be learning um, but also everything that you are going to be writing. So we'll just have a quick look. So we start with AR1. So AR1 is all about showing that you've got really good understanding of the extract, which obviously by this point you will have a good understanding of the text itself as well. So you'll have read it, you'll have analysed it, you've done multiple different activities on it. Um, so that when you see the extract in the exam, um, your AR1 or your evidence of AR1 is showing that you really understand the extract, the setting, where it is, who is involved, what's happening, why this particular section is significant to the story of the play. And your AO1 is also your reference to the text, which is your quotations. AO2 is you really understanding the deeper meanings, the ideas, the attitudes, like those, think about those big ideas, the overarching ideas um, that the writer is trying to get across to you. So those ideas and those themes. Um, it's also your inference and your interpretation, so don't be afraid to really run with an idea, to run with your own interpretation of an event or a character or a description or a technique. This is also where you comment on your writer's intention and message, which feeds in nicely to the context. So what we don't want to do is we don't want to bolt on context, we don't just want to add context just for the sake of it, just because you know it. What you want to do is you want to weave it in. You want to make sure that you're using context to enhance the interpretation or the analysis that you're already trying to make. And this feeds in nicely to the writer's intention, the message, because by understanding the context, then you understand what that writer is trying to get across to you and why. Your AO3 is your ability to demonstrate a good understanding of how the events and the characters, the relationships, the setting, everything, how it's all presented to you. And this feeds back into your methods. So how language structure, form, create and shape that meaning. So you must be able to show that you've got a very good understanding of how to really pull apart and dissect a text and, and the extract that you've got in front of you. So think about the language, think about the order, think about the chronology, think about the structure, the form, the devices, the methods, all of that works together. And then you must think about why. Why is something presented in the way that it is? So really delve into that. Why has the writer presented this character in this way? Why is this word been used? Why has this method been used? Um, and again, that can go all the way back to AO2, which is your writer's intention, your message and the context. And then finally, our AO4, this is all about you and how you write. So it's about how you present your ideas, thinking about the coherence of your essay, thinking about the sophistication of your expression, um, as well as the way in which you are developing a personal response to the question and to the extract in front of you. So let's have a look at the steps. So it's a really good idea to have a set of steps that you follow and you're just consistent with these steps because it just means that there's less thinking to do when you sit down and you're approaching an exam text. Um, so the first thing that um, I recommend you do, just read the question, deconstruct it, pull it apart, think about what the keywords are, what do the keywords mean, what are the synonyms for the keyword, what's the focus that you're looking for as you read this extract. And you can just write these at the top of your extract as it keeps you focused. As you can see at the bottom here, the question that we're going to be looking at is how does Williams make this introduction to Blanche so intriguing? Um, so even before you've properly got into reading the extract, you know it's Blanche and you know it's going to be somewhere at the start of the play because we've got the word introduction. Um, and the key word here, your focus is intriguing. Um, so then you can think about well, what does that mean? It means interesting or engaging, fascinating, captivating, could even have mystery in there as well. Um, so which words are similar to this? So then once you've understood the question, then what we want to do is we want to have a look at the extract. So you want to think about where the extract is from, what's happening, who is involved, where it is, why it's significant, what the mood is, what the themes are and what Williams is trying to show us. So this is the extract that we're going to be looking at today. Um, you can see it says here it's from scene one. I recommend that what you do is you just have a quick read of it now so you can just pause the video, have a read and then as I go through the other steps then it will all make a little bit more sense to you. 
So then once you've just had an initial reading, then you want to think about, all right, what now are the big ideas? So you can make notes on the extract. So think about number two and just be making little notes around the side just to kind of get that back into your head. Um, and then you want to make more specific notes. So what are the big ideas? What are the themes? And you start to brainstorm ideas and keywords that then can form part of your essay. And you'll, you'll see as, as you look at how I've done that, that a lot of the ideas that I've written down in the initial brainstorm, they are then fed into, um, the essay plan that I'm going to make later and then, um, the part of the essay that I'm going to write up for you. So please don't underestimate, um, how significant this step is. So as you can see, um, all of my notes here are on this side. Uh, and as we go through, I want you to keep coming back to this part of the video and to this particular slide, because a lot of these ideas, they then will appear later on. At this stage, what you're doing, it's a bit like a brain dump. You're just getting everything out of your head and then you will have a look at what you've got and you'll think, right, okay, now which ones are going to be useful? Which ones can be joined together? Which ones are now going to help me in creating the points in my plan? But some of them may also be interesting um, and useful in terms of helping you to analyze and interpret and then to talk about context. So there's an awful, um, there's an awful lot of this that can be used later on. So it's very, very significant um, to just try. And even if you just spend a couple of minutes, just brain dump, put everything on a piece of paper. It does not have to be um, as ordered as mine is. So as you can see, I've gone for these particular headings. It does not need to be so organized and so ordered. Um, so you can, you just throw everything down and then just, just have a look at it later. So then we're on to step four, which is where we then go back to the extract and we can then highlight anything that's relevant to the question and to the ideas. And by ideas, I'm talking about these, these ideas that we've already got. Okay. So you can see that I've gone through and I've made lots of different notes. And the significance of the extract, so what is it I see in there, what I already know about the play, what I already know about the characters. And then I've got this list of words down here to describe the big ideas. So these ideas will become quite important later on, but you can also look for these when you go back to the extract. So you highlight anything relevant to the question and the ideas that you've already got. And then if you have time, just try and have some time to annotate. So what can you say about the examples that you're highlighting? What do they show? Are there any patterns? Can you link any together? Um, and you can do a bit of analysis. Now, when you go back to your extract, um, sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming. So you may think, well, I've got my ideas. I've had a bit of a brain dump. I've got some ideas on the, the big ideas of themes. I've got some notes on character. But how do I then decide what to pick? Uh, because obviously now you need your evidence. Now you need the quotations. Um, and you also need to decide, well, which bits are worthy of putting in an essay? Which bits will I then be able to comment on? And you've got to keep second guessing yourself. You've got to keep asking yourself, well, if I pick this, can I talk about it? Have I got a lot to say? Is there something in there that I can analyze? Can I make an interpretation? And if you can't, you have to then move on and pick something else. And um, so this is where we're moving on to our how, which is our method. And just down here on the right hand side, I've just given you a variety of different things um, that could crop up in any extract and it's probably a good idea to to read this list and to maybe try and commit a few of these to memory so that if you are in the exam and you do get a bit overwhelmed and you you suddenly have a, have a bit of a brain blank you can think about okay what's on my list right okay so can I find any kind kind of conflict is there any tension is there a contrast with the character in a setting or two characters or relationships um so you've actually just got a lot here that will prompt your brain if you are in a position where you're struggling and you can't really think of anything so you go then back to your extract and you start to highlight, you start to highlight the things that interest you. Um, and as you can see, I've highlighted an awful lot of things here. Now, these are because these are the initial um, pieces of evidence that stuck out to me. They also tallied in quite nicely with what I'd already had on my brain dump at the beginning and on my big list of all my ideas. Um, so as I had the list next to me, I then went back to the extract. And that's what I do as well. So I have half the list, have the notes on a piece of paper. And then I think, right, okay, so if I've said that she's fragile, is there anything there that shows it? If I've said anything about social class, is there anything there that shows it? So then you've got your ideas and you're basically just looking for things that can prove it. You're looking for things that tie in with the ideas that are already kind of flying around in your head. Obviously, I've got far too many. 
this is just my initial, oh, that's interesting. I like that. Oh, I've got a bit of repetition there. Oh, I've got some, I've got some dashes there that shows maybe that she's uncertain. So I'm already thinking about methods and techniques as I'm reading through. And then what I will do is I will decide, right, okay, which ones do I want to keep? And which ones do I think well, actually on reflection, they either don't tie in with my idea or there's not much that I can say about them. So once you've highlighted and you've had a look at all your ideas that you've initially got and you've got your highlighted quotations, you can then start to formulate a plan. Now, obviously, this is taking much longer because I'm talking to you and I'm explaining it. But by the time you get to the exam, this process will be much quicker for you. The more you practice it, the more you'll be able to just quickly move through the steps and get to the point of where you're like, OK, now I'm ready to make a plan. So once you've made your plan and once you've got your ideas for the plan, then you think, right, OK, which examples are going to help me to answer the question and are going to feed back into my plan? Which examples are interesting enough for you to comment? on? remember I said to you if, you, if there's nothing that you can think to say, don't pick it. And then you've got which examples now are of no use? Which ones do I now need to cut out? I think, OK, that it, it did stand out to me initially, but now I don't think I can use it. And as you go through these questions, it just it helps you. It helps you to pick the best possible evidence to back up what you want to say. And it also means that if you've picked the best possible evidence, this is where you get to show off. This is where you get to show off your analytical and interpretation skills. So you can use this, you can go back to this and it may help you. Like I said, just have it next to you. Have it somewhere on a scrap piece of paper, um, have it in your notes that was formulated as a plan. Um, but this can then help to make your decision. So it could help with any of the following. Could this one of these ideas drive a point in your essay? Could it make it like a, a section? Uh, you've got a lot of ideas here that could be pulled into a point. Uh, can it help you with your explanation of an idea, of a quotation? Could it help you develop your inferous interpretation? So you've got a couple of these that could be then pulled in um, in terms of does this link to the idea of fate? Could this be suggestive um, of a journey? So all of these can can help you with that and with your analysis of quotations and techniques as well. Um, a lot of this can link to context as well. So we've got some contextual references. We've got Southern Belle, we've got Belle Reeve, we've got New Orleans, um, we've got social division. All of this is context. So these were the initial ideas that came out for me, but there are a range of different ideas that kind of fit all the different AOs. And some of them may help you when you're trying to think about, okay, well, what was, why did Williams do this? Why did he present it in this way? What does he want the audience to think, feel, understand? So it can help you with that as well. So then you start to formulate your plan. Now, this is my plan. Um, as you can see, I've got a planning table here. The planning table is to help you visualize um, how to plan, but the planning table actually isn't um, going to be used in this way for you because you can actually do it in a much quicker way. So the planning table helps you to know the elements of the plan that you need. So you obviously you need to have a point. Um, it can be in note form, but sometimes it does help just to write the point in a full sentence uh, because then that way you can see how it looks. Um, you can see how sophisticated the expression is, but also then it can be pulled straight into the essay. Um, once you've written your three points down, then you can start to find your quotations. Now, obviously, don't write them down um, again on this table, but I just want to show you the table so you can understand what you're building here. So you've got your point, you've got your quotations, your evidence, and then you've got notes. Now, I did say you can be writing your notes down um, as you as you highlight on your extract, but you might want to wait until you've decided which quotations you want to use. So what you're actually doing here is you've got your point, you've got your quotations, you've got your notes already or you add them now. And you're building a point, you're building a very detailed analytical point, but you're doing it in note form and then you can pull it all together. And um, so what I'm going to show you now is now we've got the three points. I'm going to show you how to develop the rest of your plan, but on the extract, just to make it much quicker for you. So you can see that the three points that I've got now, I, I, I took them from all of the ideas that I did on my initial brain, stump, brain dump. I looked at which ones can I now prove? Which ones do I think are valid? Which ones do I think have, have got a lot that I can say about them? There were many other ideas, but some of them I didn't feel there was enough depth in the extract. So point one, William skillfully implies that Blanche is a fragile and delicate character. Point two, Williams effectively depicts Blanche as out of place in her surroundings. And point three, Williams foreshadows Blanche's own journey through the symbolism of the streetcars. So I felt that they were the ones that really stood out and they were the ones that were kind of meaty enough that I could develop a whole section of an essay around them. 
And at this point, I would just like to remind you um, that if you are kind of thinking, oh, I'm not sure how, how you got to that point with creating a full point, or I'm not sure what to do with the quotations, then there are um, several micro lessons um, which are literature generic and then they can help you with the different elements of writing an essay. Um, so all the things that I do talk about here, um, if you go across to the micro lessons on my YouTube channel, they will explore those skills in much more detail. Okay, so this is the extract again. So you can see that I still got all of my highlights from before, so they're exactly the same, but now I need to be um, a little bit more specific in terms of what I'm now going to keep. You can see that I've got my plan here in the corner and, and this, this could be how yours looks. Um, so I've got point one, I've got point two and I've got point three. And all I'm gonna do now, um, because we're in an exam, we've got to do things quickly, is I'm going to number the quotations that I now think match this point and that now are going to be valuable in terms of my analysis. Now you want to pick between two and three quotations per point um, just because you really want to develop that personal response um, and just having one quotation sometimes can leave your analysis and your interpretation a little bit sparse. It is great to have more than one quotation to back up the point that you're going to make. Um, I will pick three for each like I said, um, try between, from two to three. Um, you should have at least one point that's that's got three, um, just to show that you've you've got this range. So you're you've got a range of judiciously selected quotations as well. So what I've gone through and done is I've decided, okay, so for point one, he skillfully implies that she's a fragile and delicate character. Which quotations do I think work best? So I've got the three ones that I want here. And then I've gone for the twos and the threes. Now, what I'm also going to do and what I recommend that you do is once you've decided, right, I've got I've got my plan down here, I've got my points. Now I know exactly which quotations I'm going to use. This is when you can start making some of your little notes around and your notes should really be focused on method. So start with method. Um, so you can see here I've got repetition, method, colour imagery, method. So I've got two methods here. Um, so I can kind of layer my analysis. So every time you talk about more than one thing per quotation, that's where you're layering. Um, so I, I am going to talk about that. And then I'll probably zoom in a little bit more and then talk about the connotations of white. So then I would have like a third layer. I've got repetition, I've got colour imagery, and then I've got, um, I'm going to talk about the actual colour white and the connotations. But the, what the notes do here is, as and I would be writing up my essay, the notes remind me of what I wanted to say, just so that you don't go off on a tangent, uh, just so that you don't kind of get lost in your own head. And sometimes the stress um, of having to do things in time conditions means that you can forget what you wanted to say. Get everything down, write it all down. And then all you're doing is you're looking at your notes and then you're putting it into an essay format. It just makes it much easier for you. And it's much less stressful when you come to write the whole thing out. OK, um, so this is an example of what it would look like. Obviously, you would continue and you would do notes for every single one of yours. Try and do it as quickly as you can. And then you would start to write up your essay. So now what we have is we've got what we want to say with regards to the extract, why it's significant, how it links to the question. We've got a range of evidence that we're going to use. Um, their notes will be made on techniques, language choices that you can comment on. Um, all of these notes and analysis, like I said, are going to be really, really helpful. And there's a clear plan. You can then use all of this to then write up your answer in detail. And just remember that you can follow the dream technique to help you with this. So just deconstruct the question like we started with, then read, understand, highlight the extract, analyze your choices, eliminate irrelevant or weak choices that you think then don't work and make a plan. So thank you very much for taking part in this lesson. Do look out for the next one, which is using the plan that we've made today to write up the answer. <laughs>